Here we go. Welcome everybody to our second skill set training call. I'm so excited that you guys are all here. I really appreciate the fact that you guys take time out from your lunches to come and spend a few minutes with me. So I know most of you either watched or were on last week's skill set, and we talked about learning to have conversations where you are just asking questions and a little different than having this kind of kind of conversations where you volley back and forth. You're asking questions and you're very inquisitive, you're very caring, you're very in tune and interested. Uh, and, and our challenge was to go out over the next week and have those kind of conversations, try to create conversations where every time we were in front of somebody, we were able to ask at least five questions. So how'd that go for you guys? Anybody, did anybody do it? <laughs> Did anybody try? So, <laughs> I, I tried to do it. Okay, tell us your experience. It, it was nice. So on Saturday, I went to this event that my um, optometrist had. They had a patient appreciation thing. And I talked to this lady and her daughter there. And it was really nice. And, you know, we ended up switching contact information because we live in the same neighborhood. And I'm planning to invite her to a wellness party. So that one was really that was a really good, uh, had a really good outcome from that one. How did it feel to you? I was really nervous at first, but um, it felt really nice, you know, to connect with somebody. Yeah. So you felt like you connected with them better? Mm -hmm. Did you notice that it felt like there was a lot less pressure in the conversation? Yes where I didn't have to come up with things to say to them. I just had to ask. Exactly, yeah. And so if you're really tuned in, you're listening, and you're asking questions based on their answer, rather than trying to think of something creative to say next or whatever your next you know, thing is going to be, which is how most of us show up in conversations, right? Most of us show up with a conversation going on in our head where we're not fully present, we're not fully in tune, and we're only sort of listening to what they're saying, but we're having a commentary of our own behind it <laughs> about what they're saying, right? So yes. when, when you show up like this, it's like you, it's like you go like this. <sighs> and the conversation is so nice because you're not having to be interesting. You just to get, get to show up and be interested. And how do you think they feel when you show up like that? They feel like you're interested in them and you're not trying to sell. Exactly. You don't have an agenda. You're not sidetracked by something else. You're, you're fully present. You're paying attention and you care, right? They're going to develop a much faster, closer relationship with you when you show up like this because they're going to trust you because you're, you're caring, right? You're, you're paying attention. You're present. So it's just completely different. It feels completely different. It's so nice when you, when you start showing up in conversations like this. It feels so much better. And it takes all the pressure off. So it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to do. And now, so I went from being a person who said, I don't like people, who kept her head down everywhere she went, to I almost box everybody today because I just came back from a coffee uh, first time coffee with somebody and I'm like, I am so excited. And we, we talked about Juice Plus a little bit. It's not, it didn't go anywhere today, but I got to connect with her. You know, I just, I just collected a new friend and it feels so good. It's so much fun. So, and when we show up in life like this, people see us as somebody that they want to be around. You know? Have you yeah. guys noticed it? Have you had people in your life where you're like, they're just having so much fun. They're so excited. They're so present. I just want to be around them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's so much easier than being the other way. So anybody yeah, else? Also, Alicia, I did. So awesome. I, um, I was chatting. Hold on, I'm in the airport, so I'm trying to find bad news. I know. Bless you for being on here. <laughs> I'm very so, impressed. So what I did is I was just walking around and I had to do a project at work. So I went and talked to some of my coworkers and one of my coworkers was asking like, so what are you doing? I saw you saw you started the salad in a jar <laughs> and I was like, yes. And I go, I've been, uh, my new kick is this trampoline. And I was talking to her about the trampoline that I have. And she's like, Oh, I think you get one of those. I said, like, yeah, everybody's getting a trampoline. And she's like, and I said, are those, and then she had some, she had some chewables, but she had chewables for 
like alive or something like that in her oh. overhead bin. And uh -huh. I asked her, how does she like them? Does she feel a difference that she, since, since she's been using them or she's just using them because she's told that she needs vitamins? And she said, I just take them because I need them. And I was like, oh, have you ever heard of Juice Plus? <laughs> and it just, and I was just asking her a question and question and question. And just like that, finding out about her, finding out about her husband, finding out what their diets are. They're kind of crash dieters. They get on it for about two weeks, um, one month high, and then they fall back off and start eating a bunch of crap. And I was like, okay, I go, what, so what kind of, I go, are y'all fitness gurus? Are you, you know, do you have any health issues? And she said, they don't really have any health issues. It just can't stick to anything. And they see that the weight is coming on, but they just don't stick to anything. So I was like, well, would you like to try Juice Plus? And she said, yes. And so I get her, I went to Dottie's desk because she had one of our little gift bags and we gave her the gift. I gave her a gift bag for samples for her and her husband. So she's taking them now um, for this week. And then I'm going to get back with her next week. So awesome. It wow. And it, and did it, was it easy for you to bring up Juice Plus in that circumstance? It was so easy. It was so easy. And did it feel better for you to just, instead of jumping on her, but continue to a ask questions and have a conversation before you offer Juice Plus to her? Yeah, because I'm thinking it's, it's, so, it's so different when you start asking the questions, because when you're asking the questions, you're finding out more and more about them, and you're forming, the, you're bridging the gap, that communication gap that uh, I have a product in her, try to sell it, and you shove it down your throat. And it's more like, you know right. what, you make the decision whether or not you need this. And after you're asking them all these questions, it's like they're thinking in their health in their head, I think I need something. Do you have something? <laughs> exactly. That, and, and then when you talk about Juice Plus, you can talk about it from their point of view, what would benefit them, right? Mm -hmm. So it's an easy conversation. It's very easy for you to talk about Juice Plus at that point. They feel like you're genuinely interested, which you are. You can't fake that, right? You are no. genuinely interested. And but here's one of the mistakes a lot of, of us make. We get to a point where we see an opportunity to talk about Juice Plus and we jump on them and we start throwing up all over them, right? <laughs> Instead, in this case, what you do is you find that need, you uncover that need, then you ask more questions and you learn more about them and you find out how serious they are about changing that situation. Then you get to offer a solution. Now, and I also like to back up that solution. Like you, you offered a, a little, a little um, what do you call it? A, uh, oh, my gift bag? packets. Gift pack? okay. I call, yeah, I call them my, uh, my healthy treats. Healthy a, treats. A good idea to offer along with that is, is a video, a little short video that would be specific to their needs, or at okay. the very least your, um, your mobile business card with some specific instructions. Okay. But go under button number one and watch video number two. It's called Bridge the Gap. And it'll explain everything about Juice Plus, and then and then I'll kind of so next week. What did I put in there? I put in in the gift bag. I I do the little note cards that we got from the conference, uh -huh. and I put in there. I put in my number, and then I put you know when you're ready, you know text me what your number, and then I put the different. I put that the, I do have more information that's to come. Just let me know, and then I'll tell her that I will touch base with her. But I think that I should more connect a video specific. Right. So you use a, use a tool. It's kind of what we're going to talk about today. So this is actually, it's actually pretty perfect because okay. we've, got to, we've got to start creating those next steps, right? So we're having these amazing conversations. They get better with practice. Keep doing it. Just keep showing up every day with the intentions of having great conversations and connecting with people. And not every conversation is going to turn into <coughs> a conversation and that is okay. It doesn't have to uh, because you're, you're, what you're doing is connecting with people and there will be an opportunity at some point to connect on Juice Plus. But if you're intentional about connecting with everybody that you're in front of and you're intentional about making connections, which, which turn into contacts, right? That's what they, they ultimately are. But I like being connected to people more than I like having contacts. <laughs> so you're connecting, making connections, and then there will be an opportunity and it'll be an easy opportunity when the time comes up. Then we want to share a little bit about Juice Plus as it relates to them. So it might be a little bit about our story or a little bit about somebody else's story. And then offer a next step. That's the invitation, okay? And offering a little, a little um, gift bag is, is fantastic. Just adding that tool with it will further their education. And when I do this, what, sometimes what will happen for me is somebody will call me before that original little goodie basket's gone. 
and they'll be like, how do I get started on this? Because now yeah. they not only have the product, but they have a little education behind it, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the tool is really important, and that's a piece of this process. Before we get more into those next steps, well, I want to show you guys, and I will, I will get this to you guys, but I'm going to share my screen with you. I'm going to show you some high-yielding questions. Where are they? Oh, you know what? I think I closed them out, so let me open them up again. My, my CPU was running slow, so. so. So we can start working on these conversations so that they're they're not just great conversations, but that we actually have some, some questions to ask that they can start turning them into juice plus conversations. Okay. okay. So uh, let's go over a few of these just so you can see. Is everybody hear me? Okay. Still telling me my CPU usage is high and it's slowing down. My computer's pretty full. Are we still good connection wise? Yes. I can okay. hear you. And y'all can see the screen. Okay. So some high yielding questions. As an example, and, and you did this anyway naturally, it was just a different kind of question, right, Mo? But you could say, have you ever considered? Yes. So, you know, if so, here's an example. If somebody was talking about how their kids, they're so busy, their kids never get anything by McDonald's, and, um, and, and they're feeling guilty because they don't get enough fruits and vegetables, you might say something like, you know, have you ever considered an alternative for getting fruits and vegetables in their diet? Or if somebody says, you know, I'd really like to travel, I just can't afford to, I, you could ask a question like, well, have you ever started, have you ever considered creating a, an additional stream of income? Or have you ever considered starting a business on the side? Something like that, right? Okay. And then the next logical question can sometimes be what kept you from, so what kept you from? What's kept you from starting a business of your own on the side? You know, what's, what's kept you from considering a, well, additional streams of income? And, you know, they might say something like, I just don't know where to begin, you know? Mm -hmm. And or they might say, uh, you know, I, yeah, I'd like to create some multiple income, streams of income, but I think you have to have real estate or stocks to do that, and I just don't have that, that at my, to my access. And, you know, so you're gathering more information. And... At some point, you can ask this question, maybe not right this second, but so what I'm hearing is, so you're, you're saying it back to them. So what I'm hearing is that if you, if you had a way to create multiple streams of income, that is definitely something you'd be interested in, right? And, and then you see this question right here where it says on a scale of one to 10. Well, I like on a scale of one to 10, but I would use it by saying in this case, on a scale of one to 10, how serious are you about that? I like that one. This is a real good temperature taker. <laughs> this is a real, a real good way to find out if you're ready to go to the next step. You know, because if, here's the thing. I really, want, I really want to take dance lessons with my husband. I really do. This is a truth, okay? And we talk about it. But if you said on a scale of 1 to 10 how serious I am about it, right now it's on a, it's on a level 2 for me. It's not an 8, 9, or 10 because I've got other priorities right now, right? So, yeah, I really do want to someday take dance lessons. But if I was standing in front of an owner of a dance studio and they said, like, how serious are you about that? I'd probably say, like, you know, right now it's two for me. Well, then they would know it's not my time. Yep. But if I said, oh, my gosh, I'm just looking for the right place. I'm like a 10. I'm in. I want, I'm ready to go. Well, then I'm, that's a whole different conversation, right? When you're yep. taking somebody's temperature, an eight or above is what you're looking for. If you're getting a five, you haven't really, or below, you really haven't found that true need yet. You're not quite there yet. And what you're looking for are things like, words like concerned about, um, hope, uh, frustrated, you know, some power words or help you identify that people are serious about things, Okay. So just to go through a couple more of these, one of my favorite questions is, why do you think that is, or tell me more about that. If you were having a conversation with somebody and you're at a loss for a question, having one or both of these in your back pocket are perfect next step questions, right? So if somebody yeah. says, yeah, you know, I tried nutrition before, it just didn't work for my family. And then you said, well, why do you think that is? Right? Well, yeah. you know, because we kept going to the grocery store and buying the stuff, and they're just sitting in the refrigerator and would rot, and we'd never get to it. Okay, so you're getting you're able to have more information by asking, why do you think that is, or tell me more. 
I, I told you guys, uh, I think on Voxer, that when I asked somebody, and I, I've asked this question a lot lately because I've been doing a lot of networking. If your life could be, if anything you want, if you could have <laughs> your you want, what would your life be like? What would that look like for you? It's similar to this one right here. What would your life be like if? What would your life be like if? Travel. What would your life be like if? You know, your your family was getting more nutrition in their bodies every day. And instead of on a scale of one to ten, you can also do how serious are you about that? It's a good it's a good little gauge or two. So, I like the how serious are you about that because that really lets us know about the product and about the business. Yeah. Because if they're not serious, then we can move on. Yeah. And uh, follow-up questions too on a scale of one to 10 is a good one too. On a scale of one to 10, where are you right now? So if you're sitting down with somebody and you've presented the product or the business and you say, this is at presentation time, right? Right now we're still at conversation, but I'm going to move to presentation for a second. If you say on a scale of one to 10, where are you right now? And they say, well, I'm at eight. You can very easily say what's holding you back from getting started right this second. Well, I need to do a little more research. I need, or they could say nothing, nothing. I'm ready to get started. <laughs> That's happened to me before. Okay. So especially during presentation, where are you right now on a scale of one to 10, I think is an excellent question to ask. So you can take their temperature, you know, do they need more information? Do they need to talk to their husband? You know, do they have everything they need? They're just the kind of people who need to think about it. They'll tell you that too, right? Again, okay, there's a couple yeah. more here that I think are really good questions. If, somebody's, if we're talking medical, okay, somebody's sick, somebody's in the hospital, somebody's struggling with a chronic health issue. If you say, have they, meaning the doctors, given you any advice on nutrition, that is a great opening for your next questions. Because no, they haven't right? Most of the time, they, they're not giving advice on nutrition because they don't know anything about nutrition. So saying to them, you know, next, well, would you be open to something in the nutrition realm? You know, yeah, I you know, really would be. So what's, what stops you from seeking nutritional alternatives in, in the past? I just don't know where to start. I'm just at a loss. I'm so busy dealing with my health issue. I don't know even where to begin with nutrition. Then you can say something like, well, you know, I, I, I don't know if what I'm doing is for you or not, but I may have a solution. If you'd be open, I'm going to stop sharing so we can go to the next. And I will get you guys this. I'll post it on the 19 page so you guys can have it. I like the question, um, if you are open. And that's a key phrase. There are certain things that, that are really smart to start using in your vocabulary. And being open versus being interested is one of those key things. So here's the deal. We are bombarded by so much information out there. If you ask them if they're interested, they're not going to be interested. But they don't know what they're saying no to because they don't have enough information yet. But if you say, would you be open? Well, people don't want to be closed, so they'll be open. Plus, you're empowering them when you say, would you be open? Yes. I think that's the key right there, the it empowerment. Is. It is because then they get to decide. And you're getting permission at that point to go take that next step, right? Mm -hmm. Here's some keys. You know, when you're having these conversations, you want to make sure when you ask a question, you're quiet and you wait. And sometimes it's awkward. We're so used to filling the silence and filling the void. That being quiet is difficult, but it's essential, especially when you ask key questions like, would you be open to learning more? If you talk next, you've taken away the opportunity for them to, to, to decide. You've robbed them of that decision. And you probably get a no, or let me think about it, or something like that. You might get put off. But if you are patient and wait and let them answer, give them the opportunity to think it through for a second, and then let them answer, you're, you're most likely going to get a yes. But if you get a no, that's no big deal either. Great. No big deal. They're not ready yet. Next. Am I going to talk to you? And also, I was thinking, it also shows a lot of confidence on our behalf as a Juice Plus representative in our product. Because hmm. we're not shoving it down people's throats. Exactly. And that's not who we want to show up with as. We want to show up as people. You know, I'm really, really proud of this profession. I love what we do. We get an opportunity to help people who would not have the opportunity to do so any other way, create additional streams of income. I say this all the time. I'll say it again. In order to create $500 a month in residual income, you'd have to have a quarter million dollars in the bank at 3%, which nobody gets. Okay. 
who it could take most people a lifetime to save up a quarter million dollars just to create a $500 a month residual income. Well, as a sales coordinator with a qualified business, every one of you will make at least minimum $500 a month. All you need is to be teachable and take the time. Time is your commodity to do it, okay? <laughs> My dog's gonna bark. So, so I, I meant to put them all outside. So we, we have something that we can really be proud of here. We don't have to be desperate. We don't have to sit in the realm of desper desperation or um, scarcity. There is not a scarcity here. There's an abundance. And we have amazing product and business opportunity to share with people and we get to do it professionally and well when we learn to upgrade our skill set by doing stuff like this. And, and it comes across completely differently. You know, people are not going to feel pushed. They're not going to feel sold. They're going to not feel all of these things that nobody wants to feel. Okay, I'm going to let my dog out so she doesn't bark again. Hold on. Okay, sorry. Okay, so, so let's talk the next steps. So having a great conversation where you ask a lot of questions. Um, here's a few questions you can put in your back pocket, a couple of key ones. Why do you think that is? And tell me more about that. Great continuing conversation questions. And then going to your next steps. This is where you're going to share a piece of your story that relates to their story. Because you've asked enough questions, you know what their need is and how serious they are about that. And remember this. If, you, if they don't tell you their need, you don't have anything to share with them. Even if you think you do, even if it's like my favorite example is your, your best friend feeds her kids nothing but McDonald's every night and you think they need fruits and vegetables, but she says, you know, she feeds them the fruit cup with their chicken nuggets and she's perfectly fine with that. See what I'm saying? You don't have anything to share with her because she doesn't see it as an issue yet. Okay, so even when you see an issue, unless they tell you it's an issue for them, that's your goal is to get them to tell you it's an issue for them. You have nothing to share with them. Does that make sense to everybody? So then you, you share a bit of your story or somebody else's or a piece of research or whatever that's going to relate to their situation. And then you ask for the next step. That's when you say, you know, I don't know if this will work for you or not, but if you're open, I'd love to share more. Wait. Wait for them to say yes, and then you offer a tool, okay? Now, here's what tools are. It could be your mobile business card. It could be a video. It could be a three-way call. It could be Dr. David Phillips, like tonight. It could be an in-home wellness presentation. It could be a lunch and learn. doesn't matter what tool it is. The point is to get them to the next step. And in this process, I'll re always remember there's seven exposures is the average number of exposures to get somebody to a buying situation. So an exposure is, you mentioned Juice Plus, you share a gummy sample, you um, share your story, you offer a tool, you follow up, you invite to an event, right? So don't give up just because it hasn't gone anywhere yet. Your job is to move somebody through those series of exposures. I'd count them. One, two, three, okay, about five, most there, six, seven. You know, seriously, you know, mark them out when you're working through somebody because it will make a big difference. And here's another thing. In between exposures, if it's taking a little longer, invite them to a salad in the jar. Invite them to, your, your, to our, our, a shred. Invite them to a Facebook, healthy Facebook page. Keep, and, and keep communicating it with them in between. Hey, what happened with your daughter the other day? Did she get the part? Right? And building that relationship. So then you offer the tool and you wait for them to say yes and then you give them the tool. A really good thing to do at this point, and this is where we're going to start practicing in the future here, is to set up your follow-up right then. If you can go from one exposure with the next exposure already set up, it's going to be so much easier to connect at that next exposure. Now a lot of times we'll do things like hand somebody our card and then hope that they call us. That's not going to work out really well. Not because they're not interested. It's just not on the radar yet. It's not priority. Or uh, we'll send them a video, and then we try to connect with them for a week after that, and we can't, we can't reach them, right? But if you do kind of the GoPro kind of thing, once you get the permission to give them that next tool, you ask them, hey, it's 11 minutes long. When would you be able to watch it by? 
hey, I can watch it tonight. I'll, I'll do that tonight. Okay, fantastic. So when I check with you tomorrow, you'll, be, you'll have watched it for sure. Oh, yeah, I can have done, a, done that by then. Okay, great. So this time tomorrow at 4 o'clock, I'll check, with, check back with you, and you can give me your feedback. Tell me what your thoughts are. You've already scheduled it. You pull out your phone, you schedule it right there in front of them so they know you're serious. Things like that. GoPro is a great resource for, for those kind of setting up those follow-up things. I, I do things like this also. Well, may, may I make a suggestion? So yesterday I met with somebody with Diane, a uh, prospect with Diane. We told him about the product. We told him about the business. He's invited to Dr. David Phillips. He's coming tonight. So th- I said, I asked him what his thoughts were, where he was right now. And um, then I said, so may I make a suggestion? He said, yeah. And I said, why don't we do this? We'll, we'll touch base tomorrow night after Dr. David Phillips, and we'll see where you are then, and then we'll make our next steps. And he said, great. So I already have my follow-up scheduled right after Dr. David Phillips with him tonight, and then we'll go to our next steps. I've already told him we're going to do next steps, right? Is that making sense to everybody? A lot of information in, in 26 minutes. Y'all have questions? Okay, so here's the challenge for this week. The challenge is going to be to continue to have the conversations that you're having, but pick a couple of these specific questions and put them in your back pocket and try to use them. So now we're going to try and specifically start taking it to be a Juice Plus conversation. Are you all ready to do that? Yes. Okay. So, so that's going to be where we're going to go now. And each week we're going to build on these skills. So each week we're going to do a little bit more. And by the time we're done with this, you're going to have it all down. You're going to have been practicing it and you're going to be really good at it. Okay, so a little bit more challenging. Pick a couple of these questions, put it in your back pocket, be ready to use them. But don't be sitting there thinking all the time, can I use it here, can I use it there? <laughs> Just have them there. Keep asking questions, and then when you see the opportunity arise, go ahead and, and ask those <laughs> questions. <laughs> awesome. Well, I really appreciate oh, – go ahead, Mo, please. And, and so we were using these questions on new people, right? It's not within the juicy family. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? Use them. Use it in every conversation. It's great when you're helping team members. It's great when you're helping people in your family. Well, listen, if you, we're so used to telling our family what to do. This is what we do. Well, you know, you should do blah, 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 right? What if you said instead, well, you know, have you ever considered a whole different conversation you're having with them? It can transform all your relationships. So, yes, use it on everybody. Practice with everybody. Definitely. So um, print these out. You know, keep them somewhere where you can look at them often. I often ha- I would have my team members, when they were making follow-up calls, have these questions sitting in front of them. So, cause I printed them really big. I made them really big for that purpose. So that they could have them sitting here and they could glance at them and be able to say, I'll ask this question now while they're learning. And yeah. that's, that's exactly why I made the, the font so big, I, you, in case you're wondering. <laughs> that's why. So it could be right. So where can we get that? I, I will make sure that it is on Ignite if it's not already. But if it, if it is, I'll, I'll, I'll tag you guys in it. But it, it may be there already. If not, I'll post, I'll post Facebook, it. right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. All right. So any other questions, ladies? Any other contributions? Any sharing? All right, great. Appreciate you guys joining me again here this Thursday. And we like keeping it down to half an hour because some of you guys are on your lunch. Then you can eat without <laughs> having to do it in front of the camera. <laughs> or you can take a few minutes to breathe before you have to go back to work. So thanks so much. You guys are awesome. I look forward to seeing you guys next week.